Hey, everybody, this is Darren Sabater again with the Bay Area Preps HQ, High School Home, Mercury News, East Bay Times. He's Mike Lefkow. Mike is week nine of the high school football season. And um, before we uh, get into our picks, let's talk a little bit about last week. Couldn't you take it easy on me? <laughs> yeah, I went, uh, we had four different picks and I won them all. Uh, yeah, you've now got an eight game lead in this little fun competition. I'm, I'm starting to wonder whose idea was this. Yours? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but anyhow, do you stay up all night studying this stuff? I do. Like, I uh, don't go to bed at night. I stay up and study it, look at comparative he, scores. He breaks this all down. He studies it. And uh, geez, what's your record now? Like 50, uh, 51 and 7? It's pretty good. I don't know for <laughs> sure what it was, but it was it was up there. Huh? Pretty good. Is, uh, that's an understatement. I don't think I ever did this good in a test in school, that's for sure. Um, probably not. But anyhow, um, huge week. We've been we've had this weekend circled on our calendar this Friday night uh, in Brentwood. It'll be Liberty at home in its uh, new renovated stadium, playing Pittsburgh for the Bay Valley Athletic League Championship. It's Pit Liberty is seven and zero. Had some really close calls uh, in its non-league schedule, winning what four games by a combined thirteen points. Uh, now they seem to be rolling a little bit now that they're back in league play. Uh, but this is a big game Friday night. Well, it's a huge game. I mean, this decides the BVAL championship, and it decides this could very well be the team that plays Adela De La Salle for the uh, Division One title. Right. Uh, I was looking at uh, at Liberty. I mean, Jay Butterfield last year was Sione Vaki and, uh, and, you know, all the other weapons that they had. Uh, it was 3.1 touchdown passes per game this year it's down to like in the ones like 1.7 or something like that uh, but when I was out there at Liberty last week he, they seemed to think that you know the guys that uh, were injured are getting back and the the transfers are now eligible so it's they're pretty much at full strength now yeah I mean I still don't think they're going to be as strong offensively as they were last year but I think they're going to be a little bit better They've got an excellent defense, and, uh, I mean, you can't deny Butterfield's talent. Sione Vaki, who's no longer with the Liberty program, graduated. He had two touchdown receptions in that game. Plus, in the second half, he forced a fumble at the one-yard line as Pittsburgh was going in to take the lead, and then he intercepted two passes down the stretch, including the one that clinched the game with 11 seconds to go. Uh, they're going to miss him on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah, I mean, Sione Vaki is a great player, and, and obviously that's the thing about graduation. Sometimes you lose players, and it takes a year or two to replace them. I'm covering the game, so I don't get to pick it. You are not going to cover the game, so you get to pick it. And I'm looking at your score here, and uh, sorry, Pittsburgh fans. Mike Lefkow, the man who's 51-7 and seven on the year, is picking Liberty to win this game 27-22. to 22. You know, originally I had thought the scores, I had, actually, that was the second pick. The first one I had it a little bit lower scoring. Then I thought, well, we'll see if they can get up to that. We'll see. I mean, Jerry Johnson for Pittsburgh has already set the school record for touchdown passes this on the season with, I believe, 23. He's and a, only one interception. Yeah, no, he's a good quarterback, and he's got an excellent receiving core. I mean, you put Pittsburgh's receivers with uh, Jay Butterfield, and they'd be scoring more points. You'll be at De La Salle on Friday night for San Ramon Valley at De La Salle. De La Salle coming off the 70-7 to win over California in a game that, you know, you look at that score going, wow, how could De La Salle run that score up? They really didn't run the score. It was, they took a knee at the end of the second, at the end of the second quarter. They had their backups. There was a running clock the entire second half, and they still scored 70 points. You were predict, or I'm predicting, you get the, you're covering this game. I'm predicting De La Salle to score 49 against San Ramon Valley and win 49 to six. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Well, I mean, I I think it'll be a little bit closer, but then I'm not picking the game either. That's so. true, and and hopefully for your sake, it is a closer game. Well, San that Ramon, way that you'll be able to have a built-in angle. San Ramon is the last time, a last team from up in this area that really pressed De La Salle. Uh, what was it, in three years ago they lost 28-27? That's true, so, but that was three years ago. Yeah, and as yeah. we wrote on uh, Friday night, De La Salle is reaching for one level uh, you know, to get to the modern-day St. Yeah. John Bosco level, and that uh, means some of these teams are paying the price down here or yeah. up here. <laughs> or De La Salle might have to start bringing players in for a semester like modern-day does. Ooh, ouch. Wow, okay. 
Uh, Campolindo Akalani's is also on our list. Akalani's obviously coming off the, uh, the loss to Las Lomas last week. Campos had an extra week to prepare for this game. We're both picking Campo to win. I have it as 45-21, but you have it much closer. Why? And you have 44-38 Campo beating Akalani's. Well, I'm not sure that Campo is as physical as Las Lomas. And the other thing, too, is it is at Akalani's. I think that Akalani's, after getting pounded last week, will be a little more focused, fired maybe. Up. A little okay. more fired Well, up I mean, this is a chance to, to right. show something. Uh, Northgate's going to Ignacio Valley. Uh, comparative scores, College Park edged Northgate 34-27. And easily beat Ignacio Valley 44 to 6. We're both picking Northgate. I'm predicting Northgate big 38 10, and you are a little closer 31 20 for Northgate. You know, many years ago, this game was a huge rivalry. It's kind of dimmed a little bit where uh, Northgate focuses more on Las Lomas, but uh, Ignacio is a great history, and I think their new coach, uh, Brian Shaw, I believe it is, is trying to bring it back a little bit and maybe they do play a close game claim valley charter still hasn't won an ebal game they lost last week to san ramon valley after losing their uh, ebal opener to california they will be uh is that, this game at foothill they will be on the road playing foothill at foothill um clayton at four and three needs they need this win they if just really got one of us in the cell after that oh my gosh both of us are picking Foothill to win this game. 27 to 24 for me and 12 to 7 for you. Yeah, I was really impressed with Foothill's defense last week when I covered them against Monta Vista. I mean, Monta Vista did score 35 points, and two of those were on returns by Jacob Oliphant. But they're they're a tenacious team. They really are. Uh, Monta Vista and Cal also on our list. Uh, I think Cal's going to bounce back but fall short, losing 27 to 20 to Monta Vista. You're also predicting a one touchdown game. You're predicting Monta Vista to win 21 to 14. Yeah, I think Cal has pride and I think that they, they'll bounce back. Right. I, I think, think they're, they're gonna come out and they're, they're gonna come out fired up team. after what I mean, happened six last and week. One. Right. Uh, Moreau Kennedy Fremont also on this list. We're both picking Moreau. Kind of, well, we're both predicting Moreau to score thirty four, but I'm uh, predicting that they'll hold Kennedy to fourteen. You're thinking Kennedy will score twenty two. Yeah, I don't think Kennedy's going to roll over in this game. I think it's going to be a little closer than some people think. All right. Uh, Sacred Heart Prep. This is a big game down in the peninsula. Sacred Heart Prep going to Menlo Atherton. Menlo Atherton's kind of righted itself after a 1-3 and three start. They're now 3-3, three and three, playing Sacred Heart Prep at 5-1. and one. Sacred Heart Prep, you pointed out, uh, they did beat St. Ignatius, which was a really nice win now that we're, we're seeing from St. Ignatius. But then they had the really bad hiccup at Half Moon Bay losing 40 to nothing. Uh, we're both predicting uh, Menlo Atherton to win this game kind of by similar scores. I'm predicting 38 to 25 and you're predicting 47 to 20. Yeah, yeah I kind of think Menlo Atherton is starting to get it together now and they've got a lot of talent. A and... lot of talent, a lot of talent. Uh, let's kind of wrap this up real quick. We've got Branham at Overfeld on a Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock. This game will decide that middle division in the Blossom Valley Athletic League. Well, I guess Willow Glen's still in play. They did lose to Branham last week. Uh, we're both predicting Overfelt to win. I'm predicting 31-28, and you're predicting 28-13. Yep. I think, I mean, especially if Branham is without uh, Poso. Poso, yes. Yeah. We're hearing that he was ejected from the last game, which means by, uh, by rules he one. can't play in the next game. We'll see if that actually is the case. Uh, Sarah at St. Francis. St. Francis losing last week to SI. Sarah struggling with Mitty, but getting a win. We're broke predicting Sarah to win. You're thinking it's going to be close, 41-34. You think St. Francis is going to find its offense, and I'm predicting 34-14 to for Sarah. Well, Sarah's going to be without uh, Musani. He was also ejected last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, the thing is, this is an arch rivalry. These are two it schools that rivalry. don't like each other. And I think St. Francis is going to come out, and they're going to they're gonna play tough. St. Francis swept them last year, I believe. Well, I, I mean, Sarah's a better team this year. There's no question. But I think, see, I, I think like in a lot of the rivalry games, this can be a, a statement for St. Francis. They're not going to win it, but they're going to make Sarah sweat. We'll wrap this up with Santa Teresa at Oak Grove. It's a Friday night game, 7 o'clock. We're both predicting Oak Grove to win. 
by almost identical scores. I'm predicting 42 to 14. You're predicting 42 to 12. This is a neighborhood rivalry game, but we both think Oak Grove has too much for Santa Teresa. Yeah, I think Oak Grove is playing real well right now, and I don't see this being a close game. All right. Uh, be sure to sign up for that uh, digital subscription. How much is it now? A buck a day? Uh, no. A buck a, a week. week. Yeah, a, buck a, week. a buck a week. It's a buck a week. 52 bucks for the year. Yeah, that's a pretty good price. That is a pretty good price. And you'll get to read not only preps, but about the 49ers and all their good stuff, Raiders. Uh, news. We had an earthquake here in Walnut Creek, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was last a pretty night. good quake last so night. So you get to read about that. So you know, be sure to sign up for that digital subscription. Check out our content at MercuryNews.com, EastBayTimes.com. Follow us on Twitter. Anything else? No. Here comes the cart. Oh, we don't want to get run over. So that I'll is a that is a wrap.